Alrighty guys, Chippy12 here, and as some of you know, the uh, complete Dragon's Many spoilers were put up a few nights ago. So what I'm going to be doing is going over the top 10 cards, I think, in the set for Cube. Uh, this could also apply to Limited, I guess. The only difference is that um, it's not going to be within the other cards of the set, so there's not going to be as much of the work between the guilds that there is if you're playing a sealed event or a draft because there won't be the same mechanics in a cube of course because those are rather set specific but um, this is mostly for a normal powered unpowered cube not really um, a what's it called tribal or peasant cube or anything like that but um, anyway let's get started uh, for number 10, I'm going to be working my way from 10 to 1, of course. This set didn't have all that much that we gained for Cube. I was rather disappointed in some of the cards in the set. But starting off, we have Far and Away as number 10. This is probably my favorite uh, Fuse card for Cube. It has a lot of um, flexibility with it. Uh, so, first of all, we have Far, return target creature to its owner's hand. You can either use that on an opponent's creature or on your own creature if they try and target it with something or in combat or anything like that. Then away, target, cre target player sacrifices a creature, which definitely works very well with the other part of the card if you fuse them. If they have two creatures out, you turn one to their hand and then they have to sacrifice the other. Which in that case you would get to choose because you choose which one goes to their hand and then you choose they have to sacrifice the remaining one. So yeah, this is definitely my favorite cube card for Fuse. It works well in Dimmer. Although there's quite a few good Dimmer cards already. This could fit in in a 360 card cube. So yeah, and then um, my number 9 is Savage Born Hydra. A um, X, red, and a green for a double strike that enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, and you pay one, a red, or a green. Put a plus one plus one counter on it, activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. So, you could play this guy turn three and have a one one double strike, and then turn four, you could put two more counters on him, making him a three three double strike, attacking for six on turn four, not that bad. And then turn 5, put 2 more on, attack for 10 total. So, not that bad. Um, you just have to have that mana open to put on plus 1, plus 1 counters, of course. So this guy could also fit into Gruul. Number 8, we have Progenitor Mimic. Um, so this is, of course, a clone ability here. We have 4 green and a blue. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep if this creature isn't a token. Put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of this creature. So you can copy any of your opponent's creatures or your creatures, really. It doesn't matter which. Um, so you just copy the most dangerous or something that allows you to block one of their creatures or anything like that. And each turn you'll get a new token that's a copy of that creature, as long as they don't have a kill spell that kills this card immediately. If they don't kill it right away, you'll at least have one, maybe two, of the uh, tokens, which can be pretty insane and end up winning you the game if you can keep it around long enough. Number seven, we have Spike Jester. Pretty nice black-red aggro here. It's one black and one red. Haste for 3-1. So, right off the bat, it's 3 power for 2, and it has haste. So turn 2, you're attacking for 3 with it. They could trade a creature for it if they want. Um, but yeah, it falls to any small direct damage or anything like that. But if you can get it in with an attack, turn 2. If they don't have any creatures out, it can be a pretty nice start for an aggro deck. Let's see, I think I believe we're on six here. Yeah, six. We have Advent of the Worm. One, two green and a white to put a five five green worm creature token with trample onto the battlefield. And I think one of the best parts of this card is that it can be played at instant speed, 
meaning that you could use it to block any of your opponent's creatures if they have anything smaller or bigger, really, it doesn't really matter. But there's really... I can't see an advantage of playing it on your turn unless you're haste or anything like that. But you save the mana, maybe they'll think if you're playing Bant or something you have a counter spell. Although that's not really all that necessary, but then if you can play this guy as a blocker or just save it till end of turn, it's not really going to make a difference between if you play it on your turn or on their turn. And 5-5 five, five, Trample for 4 is pretty ridiculous. You'll be attacking with a 5-5 five, five, Trample on turn 5, which really isn't that bad. The only difficult thing about this card, of course, is that it, uh, the mana cost requires 2 green and a white. But as long as you have the dual lands, shock lands to support that, it's a pretty nice card. Next we have Pyre Wild Shaman. Uh, it's a 2 and a red. Blood Rush, 1 and a red. Discard it, and target attacking creature gets plus 3, plus 1 until end of turn. Whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, if Pyre Wild Shaman is in your graveyard, you may pay 3 if you do return it to your hand. And it's a 3-1. So the thing I like about this guy is that he has a lot of flexibility. He's only 3 mana for 3-1, which is one of the things you can do with him. And then he also has the Blood Rush ability, so if any of your creatures can get through, he'll add another 3 power to that, which could be pretty nice. And also, one of the most nice things about him is his repeatability. If you have the mana open and you attack, you can pay three to return it, of course, and then possibly pump again. And it doesn't matter whether he dies in combat or if you use Blood Rush with him, you can still bring him back either way. So really, he's not that bad. Uh, three power for three costs is pretty nice with all the abilities he has also. Next, we have number four, Lavinia of the Tenth. Uh, three, a white and a blue, five total for... Pro Red, uh, when she enters the battlefield, just detain each non-land permanent your opponent control. Opponent's control with converted mana cost 4 or less for a 4-4. Four, four. It's a 4-4 four, four for 5. Um, mana cost is a little bit high on this one. 4 would have been a lot nicer, but Pro Red protects it from a lot of direct damage and some creatures as well. Still falls to black uh, removal, of course. But the big thing about it is the detain, of course. You keep you can play it before combat and then keep all their creatures from blocking. And then all their creatures from attacking the next turn. Well, depending on how early you play it. Uh, if you go first and then play it turn 5 and they only have things with 4 or less, then you can detain everything they have, other than lands, of course. And... It doesn't just detain creatures, is the thing. It detains also any of their artifacts, and most importantly, their planeswalkers, which can really slow them down and allow you to really um, destroy their planeswalkers right off the bat because they won't be able to block to protect them. So not too bad there for Azores. Uh, number three is Blood Scrivener. One and a black, two one. If you would draw a card while you have no cards in hand, instead draw two cards and lose one life. A lot of people are saying he's as good as Bob, which I say he's not as good as Bob, definitely, but he's really not too bad. Uh, for one and a black, if you would draw a card while you have no cards in hand, instead draw two cards and lose one life for a two one. So he's a two power for two. Um, you could trade him for a creature. Of course, if you have no cards in your hand, you can help out quite a bit. I can see him getting that ability anywhere from one to three times in a game, depending on how long he sticks around and how early you play him. Of course, you're not going to draw the cards right off the bat. Unless you're playing a lot of aggro, then your hand will get emptied pretty quickly. So, pretty nice in a black aggro deck. And just letting you draw, ramp those cards. And the loss of life won't be too important in an aggro deck. So, number two, we have Voice of Resurgence. So it's a green and a white, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn or when it dies, put a green and white elemental creature token on the battlefield with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. So, first of all... 
it really tricks your opponents into not wanting to play any spells during your turn, including counter spells, because if they play that spell, then of course you get at least, well, at best, this, or at worst, this guy is a bear with persist, because um, no matter what, he's going to be out there, and his himself, he counts, the token counts to um, the pumping that it gets. So at worst, it's a 1-1. If you have more creatures out by then, it can be pretty nice, and the more creatures you um, put out, of course, the bigger it gets. So it really stays with the tempo of the deck, and yeah, not really going to be playing too much aggro in green-white unless you're, unless you're playing Naya or Junk or something like that, but really pretty nice, and not too bad of a trade if you want to use it as a blocker either. It really depends on how many creatures you have out at the time, really. Um, but if you use it just as a 2-2 blocker when you have no other creatures on the field, you can use it again the next turn also to chump block. So not too bad for only 2 mana. And then the number one card from Dragon's Maze 4 Cube, I think, is above all the others, is Ralzarak. So is it has needed a good... Um, card in cube for a long time, really. This guy is way better than any of the other is it cards that I think are in cube right now. Um, so it's two, a blue and a red, which is a pretty nice cost, and four loyalty is really not too shabby there. Because three is always a bit questionable, but four is pretty nice. Um, it's plus one ability, you can tap target permanent, then untap another target permanent. Tapping down either your opponent's lands for a counter spell or one of their creatures for blocking. And you could also use the untap ability to either untap one of your creatures that attack that turn and save it for blocking, or untap one of your lands to help pay for an ability or another card in your hand. And his second ability, minus two, uh, for a lightning bolt, which is repeatable a few times if they have any annoying creatures out there. They're really giving you some trouble. He's direct damage at any time, which is pretty nice. And then his last ability is just ridiculous. Minus seven, flip five coins, take an extra turn after this one for each coin that comes up on heads. Which pretty much will end the game. You'll, yeah, well, you could always look at this probability wise. But, I mean, there's not. There's very low chance of you getting no extra turns. Well, of course, there's as much chance of you getting no extra turns as getting five extra turns. But if you have the cards, this guy can pretty much... If he gets his ultimate, which probably won't happen too often, but I think you could pretty much win the game from there. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Dragon's Maze cards for Q. Got quite a few good things here, although not much in the Dragon's Maze is all that great that I've seen. It would have been nice to get a few better cards. Most of it's multicolor, of course, and I don't know, I just don't really like that as much as a normal set, but it's Ravnica, so you gotta love it. So yeah, let me know what you got, your guys' thoughts are, and also let me know what guild you are planning on playing at the pre-release. I am personally thinking about going with Selesnya, just because it's really powerful and aggressive. So yeah, thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe, and keep watching for magic videos.